Hi guys, welcome back to Thursday Top Lessons. Hope you liked the video so far. Please do like, subscribe and share. Today we are going to talk about a very famous personality who has seen the ups and downs of life. Rajat K. Gupta. So Rajat Gupta was the MD of McKinsey for 9 years which is a 3 term which was a limit set by him only. A professional on the board of giants like Goldman Sachs, P&G, Genpak among others and holding leadership profiles at various forums such as the ICC which is the International Chamber of Commerce, WEF, World Economic Forum, Gates Foundation to name a few. And of course conceptualizing and delivering an institute of the stature of ISB adds another feather to his cap. A profile boasting of such brands cannot be completed without being connected to people of similar or in some cases even higher stature. Bill Gates, Bill Clinton, George Bush, Manmohan Singh, Sunil Bharti Mittal, Mukesh Ambani, Anil Ambani, Kiran Mazumdar Shaw as some names that might give you a sense of what this man is all about. The first non-white head of McKinsey was just the beginning for Rajat Gupta. His was one of the biggest high profile cases for corporate professionals living in the highest echelons of capitalistic success. The way his feelings had unfolded in the events leading to his eventual sentencing are so true and there is a lot to learn from this one. So here it goes. So first things first, what exactly was the charge on Rajat Gupta? It was a charge for insider trading for PNG and Goldman Sachs to the fund manager of Galleon, a person called Raj Rajaratnam. Let us now first understand his take on leadership. He says that this approach was central to my leadership capacity. Expect the best from people and they often live up to that expectation. He says that the problems we considered in Harvard had no right answers and could be approached by several equally valid perspectives. In analyzing business cases, I learned the importance of gathering and presenting all possible evidence before making a recommendation or a decision. This was a practice that he says helped him throughout his career. He also asks people to use their difference to their advantage. An example for this is he said that I never played golf. Whatever advantages my colleagues may have gained on the golf course, I preferred to stay and spend my weekend with the family. Here are the 8 laws of Rajat Gupta on leadership. First, if someone else wants to do it, let him or her. Second, if you have 10 problems, ignore them. 9 of them will go away. Third. Being there is 90% of the game. If you've got your foot in the door, you're there. All you need to do is show up in most cases. Fourth, if you can't push a noodle, find the right angle and pull. Fifth, the softer you blow your own trumpet, the louder it will sound. Sixth, there is no such thing as working too much or too little time. Seventh, listening takes a lot less energy. And 8. When in doubt, invite them home. He also says that most companies, especially large complex ones, are going to need help sooner or later. But they'll call a consultant when they are ready, not when you are ready as a consultant. The key is to be the first person they think of when they decide to make the call. He also said that anything or any project that needs to be done can be done. A famous McKinsey saying was up or out. Now here's his take on his trial. He said that the trial had all the makings of a media spectacle and the last thing I needed was to play a starring role in it. Throughout Raj Rajaratnam's trial, there has been an elephant with the courtroom, Rajat K. Gupta. Rajat Gupta is not being tried here nor has he been charged criminally. He was referred to in the courtroom as the unindicted co-conspirator. Now a hotshot, Preet Bharara, you may google him, was appointed for his case. Here's his take on Preet Bharara's appointment for his case. Bharara's appointment had initially inspired high hopes that he would aggressively pursue charges against the banking executives 
responsible for the financial crisis. Since no such charges were forthcoming, the public was very angry and rightly so because the financial markets had crashed. It was a shrewd strategy, he says, uh, Rajat Gupta says, by cracking down on an insider trading case and aggressively prosecuting the head fund managers and their informants, Bhanara could appear to be taking a hard line on corruption without pursuing the tough cases and endangering his record of perfect, near perfect convictions. And to uh, you know ensure the success of this strategy adopted by Preet Bharara, according to Rajat Gupta, he did what any good politician would have done: hire PR people, lots of them. Reputations were destroyed long before cases reached the courtroom, and indeed many never even got there. I think the same is still happening in India. Now here's his take on the jury for his case. He says that it would be up to these people to decide whether I was a scheming, greedy, envious man who traded corporate secrets for access to billionaire's circle, or an honest, trustworthy, but overstretched man who made a poor choice of business associates and was guilty of no more than bad timing. He says that my greatest concern was how many among the 12 jury members had actual experience of understanding and handling business and finance. The rules of evidence made solely by the judge shaped the narrative that the jury heard. Basically, he was business associates with Raj Rajaratnam on a hedge fund. You know, uh, they partnered on this fund and uh, Raj had basically started siphoning off money from the fund and was not giving him answers. He was following up with Raj for a lot of time and unfortunately, that one call that he made just to follow up for his money was right after a boardroom meeting for uh, showing annual results of a company, which was uh, leading to insider trading charges. The way he narrates his uh, experience of this uh, is really awesome. Uh, on the 16 second gap, uh, which was a time duration after a board meeting and him making the call to Raj, he says that it was a story of a ridiculously busy, overstretched man trying to manage his personal finances, which was dollar 10 million to the Voyager fund which they had co-founded, while also gifting numerous major companies and non-profit at home and abroad during one of the most volatile periods in the economy's history. He also talks about his experience at the World Economic Forum in Davos. He says that Davos was uh, a gathering that was always a welcome opportunity to reconnect with old friends. But this time I could see the unasked questions in too many eyes. And it was hard not to imagine that people were uh, you know, talking about me, speculating about the case. Mukesh Amani and Sunil Bharti Mittal, he says, expressed their support to him. He also says that I was presented with my first pair of handcuffs. The cold steel against my wrists evoked a surge of rage and shame, breaking through the strange calm that had stayed with me throughout that night, you know, right before his arrest. He was also going through the chain of, uh, you know, email support that he had gone, and he says that looking at the names brought up a surge of emotions. These people were what mattered to me. Not money, not acclaim, not attaining some elite status, as the prosecutor was trying to suggest. My battered reputation was not an abstract idea to me. It was contained in these relationships that I had built so carefully over decades. He also touches the philosophical side of things, saying that I knew that in those moments when we cannot see the reasoning behind the winds of fate, acceptance is a virtue. On his prison time, he says that on the whole, despite its dark moments, my time in prison is most memorable for the camaraderie, courage and humanity of people I came to know. So Rajat Gupta was sentenced to two years in prison for securities fraud. He did not take the stand to testify for himself. This is his greatest regret as he says. He claims he was in touch with Raj Rajaratnam to seek answers and get his money back from the fund that he has invested in with Raj. Raj had siphoned off money without his knowledge. 
there was no trail of any benefits due to the alleged tip offs of you know internal company filings so to close my personal take on this is uh, during times of crisis bringing down a giant is what gives the mob you know who has absolutely no clue a respite and some opportunist the much desired fame my biggest takeaway here is as you rise through the ranks and you grow for each and every action you take caution must be exercised as to not let your brand take the beating i'm talking about the personal brand the audience loves david beating goliath every freaking time